All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, today is World Day for Audiovisual Heritage, and this was established by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization in 2005, that's UNESCO, to raise awareness of the importance of audiovisual heritage and to encourage its preservation and accessibility. Uh, of course, audiovisual heritage includes all recorded sound and audiovisual documents such as films, television, radio programs, musical recordings, oral history. It is a valuable source of information and knowledge about our history, uh, I mean, about our history, cultures, and our society. I, I think this is a very good day um, because sometimes when I watch um, old clips of, you know, things that happened in the past, you know, I keep on wondering, how did they preserve this thing? <laughs> like what? Uh -uh. Like, for instance, when the um, the Queen of England visited Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. I've seen I've seen those clips. There, mm -hmm. I mean, when you had Namdi uh, Azikwe's, all of them giving their speeches. I've, I've seen a while. When I see some of those um, clips, I say, how do they preserve these things? When do they keep them? You know, mm -hmm. I'm very excited about this thing. You know, those those days they used to use different types of cameras. They had uh, the cameras Any had one way the thing is as long as it's preserved. Yeah. It, well, yeah, preserving such. Preserving anything is what gives it value eventually mm. because over time, you know, it's just like when you watch like an old movie and you watch it now, you see the difference in the audiovisual presentation. Absolutely. You know, you watch some James Bond movies now and you're like, what was I thinking? We yeah, like how was this like the best thing then? But yeah, and even in a couple of years to What's come. What's the worst is Star Trek? No, 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 don't, don't talk about that. <laughs> and in a few years, what we're watching now and we're calling sensational will be looked at like, yeah. yeah. So it's just time. I like it. I like the fact that, you know, um, <laughs> you're, that a, you're, able, you're able to look at it and see the evolution of um, the industry, the audiovisual industry. You're yeah, very correct. Yeah. So what did you find for us today? So my new story today is, um you know the issue uh well it's not an issue but the new um the new order by lagos states you know lagos states has been closing down markets closing down parking you know um taking uh, uh hijacking people's cars <laughs> on the highway because some people come out of their cars so uh, of some of their properties even uh i think this happened in sule like they were just all their cars were clamped clamped setbacks uh, yeah so and clamped on their parking lot right in front of their here. building so i don't know why but this story is lagos state sealing um eight buildings for blocking drainage mm. you know they've broken down buildings for even just being by the drainage and all that so um lagos state um ministry of environment and water resources on friday uh, october 27 sealed eight buildings along Bornu way in the Butemeta area of the state for blocking drainage and causing flooding in the area. The spokesman for the ministry, Kunle Adeshina, um, disclosed this in a post on his ex-handle. Um, and he stated, operatives from the Drainage Enforcement and Compliance Department of MOE and WR on Friday sealed eight properties along uh, Borneo Way, Ibute Meta for allegedly dumping construction materials on drainage and causing flooding. That's what he wrote on his page. And um, well, for me, um, I would. This is a welcomed, you know, um, arrangement and operation that they are carrying out. Is it now matters on? It now borders on how it is done. You see, um, as much as I like this. I will go back this is not this will not be my issue i think the issue would be some of the other you know things that they've done like um i know that in lecky there was an estate that was bulldozed down yeah, but those ones too were on drainages no? yeah they were on the what did they call the it canal yeah on the mm -hmm. canal but that's the thing so i feel like there should have been enough or a notice 
Did you listen to the story? Or did you read the story that was said that whilst they were at the foundation level? No, that goes to the property people. Hey. I'm talking about the people who have boards. No, you don't get the point. So the point is, no, most of those those buildings are like, um, what do they call it? You buy off plan. Usually, most of those estates, you buy it off plan. So yeah. you, you would pay for them to like develop yeah, it. Yeah, but they were still developing. So they had already given them this warnings that do not build here. But you know how people, Nigerians, who just feel like we can get away with things, we can because... It still boils back to the, uh, is the property people, not the, own, not the people that actually bought the property. I don't know if you understand, but they're the, the developers. Ones that that's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying to you that yes, yeah. the developers own mm -hmm. is on one hand. But I'm saying to you that even you, as a property buyer, we we said it the day we had the conversation. Do your checks. Do your checks. Be hundred percent sure. So that you don't fall victim to don't fall like victims. Because True. even that particular property you're talking about, they mm. are taking a pause. They resumed the the demolition today. <laughs> so. <laughs> If you thought maybe they had stopped and everything, and yeah. they're not coming to your house, well, they are on, this today. On their own so my story is actually interesting. It says twenty-four government polytechnics, educational uh, education colleges will be converted to varsities. No fewer than twenty-four polytechnics and colleges of education have been converted to universities by the federal and state government. However, the academic staff union of polytechnics and education reform activists tagged the move as a plan to bury the essence of technical education in Nigeria. Over the years, governors and members of the National Assembly came under fire over what was tagged as the unlawful proliferation of universities in the country. I like this story and I completely agree with the academic staff union of polytechnics and education reform activists because um, polytechnics, right, technical schools are yeah. actually there yeah. to solve real problems in the society. Yeah. Do you understand? Universities are on one hand. A tech, you cannot take the place of what a technical school stands for. Mm -hmm. It's just in Nigeria that everything is just upside down. Because going into technical schools abroad is tougher than yeah. entering a university. Yeah. Like literally they pick the best of the best. Because when you come out of those schools, it is... You are coming out to solve real problems in the country. Real infrastructural challenges. Real all of these things. Because these are things that are like you're coming... Fully baked to to just start work immediately. So are you putting all like universities that you come with just head knowledge, right? Yeah, Which okay. is maybe like or theses and all of that. Technical schools, you come up with practical knowledge to be able to solve real problems. So if we say we are having issues around manufacturing or maybe like cars and all of that, it is people that come out of technical schools that can build cars. It is people that come out of technical schools that can build roads, that can build houses, that can build journeys, that can plan a, a, a country. So when you start to convert those schools to universities, it means that you never understood the meaning and you're part of the problem. You are part of the problem because why we have a problem today is that people that do not pass JAMP, they don't pass WAEC, they don't pass, um, what's it called, they have to patch different results. They're the ones that go and um, uh, learn in our colleges of education. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that come out to become teachers. Mm -hmm. Then how, what kind of quality of, 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 uh, of what's it called, uh, teaching. teaching would they give to the children? Right? That is one we face. The same thing. People that are not able to make it into a university, they go to technical schools, which is not supposed to be. Technical schools are supposed to, and, and educational colleges are supposed to pick the brightest minds. So technical colleges are supposed to be like the MIT and the rest of them, which are the... Well, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, not technical school. Mm -hmm. Oh, we keep quiet because the blessed say sometimes when we are talking, our mouth is smelling because I don't understand this kind of move. It does not make any sense to me. It's of you to find a way to fund these schools and stop this, um, what's it called, this disparity between polytechnics and universities. Give them the, the kind of attention they deserve. You're converting them to universities so that everybody just go and read book. Okay, we've had that with a whole lot of come things on. happening in the country, so we All shouldn't right. be surprised. We'll take a break. When we come back from the break, let's discuss uh, silent firing. I like that topic a lot. Stay with us over right back.